Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem minimum operations to make binary array elements equal to one. I guess that's the first variation of this problem. But anyways, idea is pretty simple. We're given an array that consists of zeros and ones. So it's a binary array. The first example looks like this. And we want to transform this into an array that is all ones. So that would look like this. We're only allowed to do that by changing three contiguous elements at a time. So we could change these three, or we could change these three, or we could change these three, or we could change these three. You're probably thinking, I'm going kind of slow so far. And I guess, to be honest, I'm kind of deliberately slowing myself down because as soon as I saw this problem and as soon as I finished reading the description, it became pretty uh, clear to me how to solve this problem. Because first of all, that three consecutive element thing, I mean, it, it just looks like a sliding window. So maybe they're trying to trip us up, but I went for it anyway. I went for the bait that they gave us. It seems like a sliding window problem. Let me just see if maybe there's a sliding window solution. Well, it seems, though, that maybe it would involve backtracking, right? Maybe some of you thought that this could be a backtracking problem. I thought that's definitely possible. If I can't find a sliding window solution, that's going to be the next thing I probably consider. But then I asked myself, because with backtracking, like if I flip this window, that might not be the correct decision. Maybe we're not supposed to flip this window. Maybe we're supposed to flip the next window like this. How do you know? It seems like we have no way of knowing, right? Well, then the idea came to my mind. There's probably a trick behind it that made me think along the lines of greedy, and then I saw it immediately. Do you see it? Because I see it. Take a look at this. If I want to flip this bit, well, I probably wouldn't want to flip it. It's already a one. But if I did want to flip it, well, I could do this window, or I could do this window over here, that also includes this guy, or I could do this window over there. All three windows include this middle element. If I wanted to flip it, I could choose three different windows. My God, this seems pretty complicated, right? No, I promise you, it's not complicated because greedy is going to help us. Because consider this, what about the guy over here? How many different windows does he get to choose from? Only a single one. So now you tell me, is there actually three choices or maybe there's actually just two choices or actually maybe there's just one choice and that's what I'm here to tell you. There's really only one choice. And the idea is this, if this is a zero, there's only one way to flip it into a one. I only have one choice. I have to do this window. I have no other choice. Now, of course, you might be thinking, well, if I end up turning this into a one, that kind of sucks because then I have to turn these or, or these two into zeros. And you're right. It does suck, but it was necessary. And it's OK because now we can flip the next window as well. Because we're going to assume that everything before our current pointer is already one. Don't touch any of that because it's already good. And we had to flip that bit. So now everything before this line is good. I mean, we could, if we wanted to, we could go back for some reason and do a, another flip. But I mean, why would we do that? Why would we want to unset some of these bits? Why would we want to basically undo the work that we already did? We wouldn't. So we don't touch anything before that line. And now we have a sub problem. This is the rest of the array. How many flips is it going to take to make this thing zero? Well, once again, just go greedy. Just look at the current element only. If this is zero, well, nothing else matters. It has to be flipped. We have to do this, this specific window. It has to be because we're not going to touch anything before and we don't want to do this window. That doesn't include this guy. So we have to include this window. We flip it. We don't care about what happens to these two. Well, we do care, but it's not going to change the result. Then we might have to flip those. We might not. So now we look at this window. We flip it as well. We end up uh, getting a one here and a one here and then a zero here. And then our I pointer will be over here now. We'll look at the next window. Well, specifically only this element. It's one, so we're good. Go to the next iteration. Now our I pointer is going to be over here. We look at this window. This guy is a zero. So once again, we are done. We do the flip. This is one and this is one and this is one. And we would stop once there's not at least three elements remaining in the array. But this is 
where you might get tripped up a little bit. How do we know if there was actually a valid answer? Because they tell us if it's not possible, we should return negative one. Well, think about this for a second. If I had an array that looked like this, I have four ones and then a couple zeros, and the window we have is of size three. I mean, it's literally not possible to do this. I mean, I guess we could flip this window, but we'd basically just be turning this into a zero and then these into ones. So uh, this is a solution I'm gonna go ahead and code up. This is the sliding window solution. I think it's the most optimal one. It is linear time and constant space. I don't think we can do much better than that. But now that I think of it, I'm starting to realize there might be an alternative solution. I feel like if there was ever a case where, I don't know if I'm gonna continue with this, but if there was ever a case where we had less than three consecutive ones or greater than three, that wasn't like a multiple of three, it just wouldn't work. But I guess I'm not 100% sure. I think there actually probably is some counterexamples to that. Like maybe like three zeros, two ones, three more zeros, and then another one, something like that. But anyways, just some random thought that I had. Let's code this up now. So what I'm going to do is have my result. That's going to count the number of operations. That's what we're going to return. And I don't know why my code syntax highlighting isn't working. Okay, just needed to refresh. But then we're going to go through every index in the input. And I'm going to do it like this. Take the length of the array and subtract two from it. And then I'm going to check if the current number at index i is equal to zero. Well, then we perform a flip and we're going to have to increment our result. Off the top of my head, I feel like a helper function might be useful for the flip. So I'm going to do something like this, passing in the nums array, which we probably don't have to do but definitely should pass in the index that we want to flip. And then I can just update nums at index i and flip it with a ternary operator. So zero, if the number is non-zero, otherwise it will be set to one. And so then here I can just call flip on nums, passing in i, passing in i plus one, and passing in i plus two. And then after all of that, well, now I just kind of realized that I forgot to mention how we know if it's invalid. Um, so since we're doing all the ones up front, we know that it's invalid because we will stop two elements before the end. So we want to look at the last two elements. It's possible that they're both zero because we didn't flip them. We didn't even look at them. If they're both zero, then obviously we return negative one. If one of them is zero, but the other one isn't zero, still we return negative one because we're never gonna be able to flip this guy alone or two of these alone. We have to do three at a time. But if they're both one, then we are good. So that's the idea here. So we'll say if not nums at negative one in Python, that gives us the last element or not nums at negative two. In Python, that gives us the second to last element. In this case, we return negative one. And we're guaranteed that at least two elements are gonna exist in the nums array. So we don't need to check the length or anything like that. And this is the whole code. Of course, I don't even know how I did that, but I made it a plural for some reason. Flips should be flip. And you can see here that it works. And I promise you that it's pretty efficient. This was the other time that I ran it. I guess the memory kind of varies a bit. Maybe I think the extra function call probably added a little bit of overhead. But anyways, if you found this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.